Hello everybody, and today I would like to introduce you to Mr. Banana Man. Now Mr. Banana Man would like to go to Elu today, so we're going to put Mr. Banana Man into a rocket. We are going to take said rocket that we have just put Mr. Banana Man in. We are going to split it in half. Then we are going to take that rocket, the two halves, and put him into an SSTO. And then we are going to launch him, and Mr. Banana Man is going to, going to live out his dreams on Elu. It's going to be great. So let's cross right over to the first flight. Uh, yeah, I kind of had a weird idea to uh, assemble a rocket in orbit. You know, I thought that might be a clever thing to do. I don't know. And then I started working on it. Then I'm like, hey, what, what kind of payload could I do? And, I, and then I thought, hey, a banana. <laughs> that, that seems like a great idea. We should send a banana to Elu. Um, so thus, thus begins the new series on this channel, um, The Adventures of Mr. Banana Man. So, um, basically, the way this will work is we're going to be sending Mr. Banana Man to different places in, like, very, like, creative ways, I guess, or dumb ways. So, like, we're, we're assembling a rocket in orbit to take him to Elu, and then maybe uh, in the next video, which who knows when the next video will be in this series, um, maybe we'll, we'll pick him up with, like, a giant, I don't know, like a giant crab-shaped rocket and fly him to... <laughs> <laughs> fly him to, like, Duna or something, you know, from Italy, we'll see, there's a weird series, you know, Mr. Banana Man, he's a, he's a weird dude, he's a weird banana, a weirdly square-shaped banana, <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what you guys think of Mr. Banana Man, maybe he's cool, I don't know, you know, if you think he's cool, subscribe button, I don't know, I don't know, maybe, um, thank you guys very much for all the subscribers, by the way. We're trying to get to 6,000 subscribers by the end of the month. Gonna be pretty tricky to do, but hey, you never know. You never know, you know? We could, like, obliterate that subscribe button. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Doing a pretty standard send prof profile with this SSTO. Um, we also have this... I don't know if I said there's a comment. We also have a comment section, like section, you know? We also are gonna... Uh, enough with the plugs. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Pretty standard send profile with the SSTO. Um... Uh, the only real difference, uh, but with the actually there really isn't a real difference. It's, it is pretty well, okay. I should say the challenge, I, the challenge with this SSTO, uh, is we're launching the uh, bottom stage, the uh, you know the bottom stage first. So we're gonna launch Mr. Banana Man's rocket in two launches or two flights. So the first stage is the bottom stage, um, and the second uh, launch is gonna be um, our upper stage and the fairing with Mr. Banana Man in it. Um, and the problem is this bottom stage weighs about 60 tons and the entire thing weighs about 85 tons so the entire uh, rocket itself so this thing is like the by far the biggest payload and the problem is because the cargo bay is in the front uh, it actually causes a lot of weight in the front so it actually is pretty tricky to keep that nose up during our during our oxidizer burn which we just did right now then we're going to get ourselves into about an 85 by 85 ish orbit and then uh, we'll circularize we'll deploy our payload then we can land our SSTO uh, this is a pretty cool SSTO. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this thing came out. Pretty uniquely shaped wing. The rest of it's not very uniquely shaped. Um, some nuclears on it, obviously, to uh, do our orbital insertion and to burn a little bit. Um, and then we're gonna we're gonna bring it back down. So the, yeah, this thing is just an SSTO. It could actually probably go to I think it go to it. Pro I don't think it could go to Minmus and back, but it could go places. Um, well, if it didn't have a payload, it could probably go to the Moon and back, to be honest. But um, hey. It has a payload, right? What's the point of an SSD if you're not going to have a payload? And what's the point of talking if you're talking about nothing, right? <laughs> um, so there you go. Uh, payload is deployed, um, which I've been doing. <laughs> and then we're just going to uh, just use the RCS thrusters and kind of pop her on out of the... Pepper out of the cargo bay, and then we're going to go ahead and close up the cargo bay. I, I didn't set up an action group for this flight. I do in the next flight for have the gar cargo bays actually closed and open in sync and with each other instead of the dumb way that I did it. So after that, we're going to get ourselves pointed retrograde and get ourselves deorbited uh, down to uh, down to the back to the KSC, back to the KSC. Right? Pretty fun, epic, epic, big brain, amazing. So now we are going to um, do said thing. So uh, time for the reentry. Uh, this thing is actually it's really aerodynamic on reentry. So basically, just what I do is I point prograde up until just under 30 kilometers, and then I press stability assist, and because of the curvature of the planet, the, pain, the plane's pitch gradually increases. Um, so what you'll see here is we do like a big old bounce off the atmosphere to actually get ourselves to the runway, and then what I do is I kind of purposely get us into a flat spin right above the KSC so we can land, land right on it. This thing isn't uh, stable um, at the higher altitude, so you'll see. Yeah, but actually, it is fairly stable um, on, on this flight. It was, but as you can see here, as I deployed the landing gear, um, the front landing gear did not deploy. So that's not good. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to have to do about that is we're going to have to land it on the nose. 
Um, uh, so we're not going to land on the runway because we, we need a nice long landing strip. So bye-bye runway. So coming on down to the grass here. And I and I and I and <gasps> Boop. <laughs> that was a weird landing. Um, but it worked. Hey, it worked. That took a long time to do. And then I'm like, all right, well, that's not good. All right. All right. <laughs> How much wham? So um, I'm like, all right, for our next launch, I'm going to fix it. And the landing is going to deploy properly. And I never tested it, and we've had the same problem on the second landing. So I guess I'll have to stay tuned to see my terrible... We actually do land it on the runway the second time. I guess I got better, but either way. Um, this is the second payload we're launching now. Uh, we are you, we are going to be launching the upper stage uh, with the um, we're gonna be with, uh, with the Mr. Banana Man in it. It's basically a cheetah from the Making History DLC with a little fuel tank and then um, some uh, avionics and electrical and command, uh, you know, um, or reaction wheels, rather. And yeah, yeah, that's gonna end some landing legs and stuff to take Mr. Banana Man out to Elu. Um, so yeah, like I said, this this one got into orbit quite a bit easier. As you can see, we're already through about 900 meters a second. When we cross around 10 kilometers, I do pitch the thing over just a little bit uh, to try and get a little more speed. Then past fif passing 15 kilometers around 1,400 meters a second ish, um, that is when I throw on those their nuclear engines. Once that is, uh, once uh, we get to about 1,600 meters a second and our speed is no longer able to increase around around 20 kilometers that's when we go into oxidizer mode on the rapiers and as you can see our oxidizer mode uh, gets us a lot farther this time obviously um, we, we required a lot less fuel to get into orbit it's actually kind of crazy the difference in fuel consumption for the different payloads but hey uh, that is uh, that's us basically we're almost home free into orbit um, we do have to do a rendezvous obviously so um, still, still a little more challenge. And then we have to obviously get ourselves out to Elu and stuff. So there we go. Looks like we're a little bit behind the, um, or a little, we're a little bit ahead of the uh, target rather. So we're going to get into a slightly higher orbit around Kerbin, um, and then we're going to uh, get ourselves circularized, burning the last little bit of the oxidizer, and then the nuclears. And then we're gonna, just going to wait one orbit once we are there. Once we have that orbit, once we have our, I guess, parking orbit. If that's really what the term you'd use. Um, Set up a little encounter here. Obviously, we have tons of Delta V to waste. Like, look, we still have, like, over um, over a third, almost half of our liquid fuel. So, pr over half of our Delta V, to be honest, and then with the, the, the nuclear and stuff. Uh, absolutely no problem um, to get ourselves into get ourselves into a point of rendezvous. Look at all the Kerbals having a great time. Have, they're having a lovely time, lovely time. Um, so they're going to be time warping down there. That's on the night side. So after we kind of get our relative velocity canceled and I kind of go into the atmosphere for a quick second, that actually helped our uh, um, docking or rendezvous. We were 0.4 kilometers of separation. Then after that little atmospheric skedaddle, um, we were <laughs> down to 0.1 kilometers. So hey, looks like it all worked out in the end. So yeah, because it's nighttime, we're going to get our relative velocity canceled and get really close to it, and then we're just going to time up to the daytime because I'm tired of docking at the night. I feel like I always dock at the nighttime side, and it's lame, and I don't like it, and bad, evil, evil Knievel. So there we go. So relative speed is canceled, and we are going to um, gonna get ourselves gonna get ourselves into a situation in which we, um, like I said, we, we time up to the daytime. So uh, four meters a second, three, two, one, zero, and then, yeah, so time warping, time warping to the morning. We do drift away a little bit from the thing, but it's not too far, it's like 0.45 kilometers at most. Um, well, actually, we probably only got 0 0.3 or 0 0.2, so there you go. Um, whacking into the stage as standard operating procedure. There you go, up, opening up the uh, cargo bay, one big ol' open, um, and then it's gonna be time to, um, it's gonna be time to, uh, go into Batam to... Uh, get us get the uh, get the run get the docking done. So we're gonna undock that uh, upper stage in here just a moment um, The weird kind of gimmick of this video is like normally you'd like launch like a transfer stage. But we're literally launching a rocket um, It's like yeah, it's literally a rocket <laughs> um, uh, Yeah, it's literally it's literally like it has like a sta bottom stage upper stage It looks like a rocket. It has a fairing it has a skipper engine as a bottom stage So, you know, it's it's basically a rocket. Um, uh, you know, but in space, it's weird, and, you know, weird crap, right, man, or ma'am, right? Oh, that was cringy, I don't know what I'm trying to do here. Anyway, docking, right? We like docking, so there we go. And then we're gonna, uh, just, uh, get to a ELU transfer window. Took a while to get to, ELU is pretty tricky to get to, um, and because it has a really inclined orbit, so if you're not at a good transfer window, it's, it, it, it's a lot of delta V, but luckily, we are at a good transfer window, so nothing to worry about on that front. 
get my staging set up. I gotta check your staging. And then uh, get ourselves down to the new node and get ready to start burning. We're gonna leave the SSTO in orbit. We're gonna come back and do that, recover that last. Um, because, hey, who would, who, you know, um, I don't know. I don't know why. We're just gonna leave it sit there for a few years while we fly out to Elu. Um, I guess I just didn't want to. Maybe I knew that it was going to have landing problems. So we actually get a convenient gravity assist from Jewel that saves us like probably five meters a second in total of Delta V because we barely, barely, we barely get into its SOI. We're really high relative to Jewel or really inclined. So we've now staged way at the bottom stage. Honestly, we would have we have enough fuel to get back to Kerbin from Elu, like absolutely no problem. Now, I wasted quite a bit of fuel in this mission too. Um, but unfortunately, no heat shield. So, um, and probably that's part of the series, isn't it? Mr. Banana Man going on amazing adventures and stuff. Um, like every video, we send him to a different place. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know if this will catch on. I don't know. Maybe it's a good series. I don't know. We haven't done a series in a while, but hey, it's series time, right? <laughs> um, just going to crossfade to us. Um, crossfade, or you crossfade through our time lapse. I don't know if you could even see that crossfade because it was so smooth. My editing is so good, man. I don't know, maybe. Um, so we do a little more correction burns, and I'm gonna skip through all that because I know you guys are probably here to see Mr. Banana Man come, come into his amazing. I don't know why he wants to go to Elu. It's like the ugliest planet in KSP now. That's like one of the only ones that aren't revamped. Um, but hey, it, it looks really cool. It looks really cool. Um, even even though it's not revamped, uh, like the general, like the actual planet itself, like the surface of it when you're really close, yeah. You know, but um, when you're far away from it, it looks pretty good. Um, you lose a planet, which is weird, because it's, you know, it's smaller than Tylo, smaller than Val, smaller than, those are all moons, smaller than the Mun, I think. Um, either way, so there you go, pop the fairing, we can finally, once again, see Mr. Banana Man in all of his glory, all of his square-shaped banana glory. <laughs> As says we do our landing burn here, started the burn a little bit too late, so we have to kind of do some radial out procedures here to get the thing... To get the thing into a position to not explode on impact <laughs> and land on impact that's kind of the that's the objective mr banana man's kind of floating isn't he i don't know he's a magical banana looks like a robot kind of i don't know i don't know what the lore or the backstory of mr banana man is <laughs> he just looks very i don't know unamused <laughs> i don't know what that facial expression is like <laughs> uh either way coming in and touchdown a second ago a little delayed but hey um, so, now we're gonna do is we are going to stage away Mr. Banana Man or get a decoupler and he's just gonna kinda, kinda roll his way off of the, <laughs> roll his way off of the rocket cause, uh, we don't need that rocket anymore. I mean, it, it has a lot of Delta V. It could really go, it could probably crash into most places in KST with that. I think it could crash into anywhere. I don't know, maybe later in the future video we'll just crash that, <laughs> that discarded stage somewhere. It gotta be a lame video. I'm not actually that for a video, but, uh, either way, we're going to now, um, you're going to now crossfade back to Kerbin and do the SSTO landing. So we're going to go ahead and uh, quickly get ourselves deorbited. And now we can start our final re-entry. All the rolled R's, right? <laughs> oh, it's fun to do. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so, um, so, yeah, oh, oh, so, so, yeah, um, <laughs> great commentary, right? Um, yeah, doing the same re-entry profile as the last one. This one is a little bit more, I don't know, stable? No, no, actually, it's less stable, but here we go. Doing a big ol' air break here to slow down. And then uh, we're going to try, I try and glide down amazingly, amazing smooth, but then we kind of spin out. So I, uh, I do have to use some of, like, the infinite amount of fuel we have left, basically, um, to reignite the jet engines. Kind of give a little bit of a, little bit of a push. So now for my not very subtle um, quick save and quick load, because uh, <laughs> I uh, did not get this first try. Because guess what? The landing gear problem is is still there. I really don't even know what the problem is. It was, it's weird, like, um, it's, you know, weird crap, man. Um, coming in pretty good, pretty good alignment to the runway, so that's pretty good. We do land on the runway, like I said earlier. Um, yeah, we're coming a little bit slower, so it's it's a little bit easier to kind of to kind of to kind of maneuver ourselves onto the runway in a way that doesn't cause us to you know explode. Um, so yeah, dropping it down to one time speed, and over the runway, losing the uh, last little few I don't know we're losing altitude meters of height. I don't know. Here we go. Come on, nice good old land and and touchdown. There we go. Pretty good landing. And then uh, yeah, we just blow up that uh, that kind of area. Um, that, that extra jet engine there to help us keep the nose up uh, during our ascent, that's what that's for, but, um, yeah, so I stopped and I'm like, okay, I'm curious, why, so I assumed that the, um, the little, uh, the jet engine that I had mounted up front was causing the gear not to be able to extend, so I retracted the gear, and then I re-retracted him now that it's blown up and not there, 
and it's that's not the problem. So I have no idea what the problem is. So I don't know. Someone can let me know in the comments how um, stupid I'm being. But <laughs> uh, yeah, either way, that's going to be it at the end of the video. So I'd like to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please rate or comment to this video. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.